our previous lesson introduced us to how Bengali evolved from Sanskrit and different other languages like Persian, different European languages, tribal languages. Now, when a language comes into being, the people of the community who speak that language find a sense of belonging and identity in that language itself. And so, in this way, we can consider language a very important non-material aspect of culture. Now, when we talk about Bengal, we also have to take into account the geographical location of Bengal and how it was also very important in shaping the cultural landscape of this region. Now, after the 16th century, people of Bengal started migrating from the less fertile western Bengal to the more fertile regions of southeastern Bengal. Now, this shows you the western Bengal and here following the 16th century, the lands became very infertile, which is why people were now forced to migrate to the southeastern part of Bengal. Now, what happened as a result of this? Most definitely, when people start migrating from one place to another, the cultural aspects of those regions would also shift and evolve. When the Mughal Empire controlled Bengal, they established Dhaka as the capital of this region. Now, from this we can understand that when Dhaka was established as the capital of Bengal under the Mughal Empire, this region, this southeastern part of Bengal now became more prominent socio-culturally and politically. So, from this we can understand that when Dhaka was established as the capital of this region under the Mughal Empire, this place now gained more importance in terms of social, political and cultural aspects. Now, whenever any kingdom, any empire, any dynasty spreads its control over any region, it makes sure to spread its religion in that region as well. Likewise, when the Mughals established Dhaka as the capital of this region, they wanted to ensure the establishment of several religious institutions in this region. This now brings us to a very important discussion on a certain kind of religious institution that came into being in different parts of Bengal around this time when the Mughals were ruling this region. For the purpose of furthering their faith and religion, many new shrines were set up and established in different parts of Bengal when the Mughals were ruling this region. Now try to understand this phenomenon very socio-culturally. When people had to migrate from one place to another, be that in search of food, water or more fertile lands, there was a period of instability and uncertainty. Because people had to leave their homes and other kinds of property back in the western part of Bengal and they were compelled to move to the southeastern part of Bengal. Now, during this time of chaos, of instability, of uncertainty, people wanted solace and peace and comfort. Now, who provided these people solace and peace and some sense of stability? This sense of stability, of purpose was provided by community leaders who were known as the peers. Now, these peers were mostly saints, Sufis or other religious personalities and in times of distress and uncertainty these peers extended help and moral support and comfort and solace and security to those distressed people. Now for this reason the peers were also gaining importance in this region. They became very revered because people almost worshipped these peers for the help and support these peers extended. Now, after the death of these peers, they were worshipped in the shrines or majars. So, can you understand what is the reason why these shrines or majars came into being? 
In this regard, let us talk about one very popular shrine that can be found in the present day Indian state of West Bengal. And this shrine is known as Furfura Sharif. Now, Furfura Sharif is the second most popular Darga in India after Ajmer Sharif in Rajasthan. So, this tells you how important and how revered a place this shrine was. And it was not just this shrine or Darga. Many new shrines sprang up in order to provide peace and security to the distressed people who had to migrate from one region to another. Now, we have already discussed this point at great length that in ancient and medieval times, different rulers used to build and construct new temples in order to show their power. Now, religion is something in which human lives are always rooted. And when new rulers or kings established their control over new regions, they made sure to spread their own religion in those places. And simultaneously, they commissioned the construction of many religious institutions, which would make them more acceptable, more prominent, more powerful and more popular among the masses who lived there. Now, the spree of building temples throughout Bengal continued through the 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th and even 19th centuries. Many new religious structures were built in different parts of Bengal and all these were intended to display the power of the rulers or the groups of people who erected these temples. Now, whenever we talk about temples that were constructed in ancient or medieval times in the Indian subcontinent, we invariably associate them with upper caste members because it were the Brahmanas who had access to the religious places. They were the ones who were allowed to enter the temples to offer their prayers and devotion to the gods. Now, around this time, many Lower caste social groups in Bengal such as the Kolu and Kansari also helped in the construction of many temples. Now, a very important question that requires to be addressed in this regard is that how did these lower caste social groups get the money and resources that was required to build a temple? Because building a temple is a very expensive affair. How did these people afford the construction of new temples in Bengal? This now brings us to a discussion on the various European trading companies that entered the Indian subcontinent through the 17th and 18th centuries. Now, mind you, many of these European trading companies did not have proper awareness and knowledge of the caste system that was prevalent in the subcontinent. They did not know about the social division and hierarchization in terms of castes, which is why they extended their support, their patronage liberally to all the people. Now, in this regard, many low caste families now improved their socio-economic conditions by availing or making use of the opportunities which were extended by the European trading companies. So, these low caste families that initially did not have any access to wealth or resources now slowly started growing and developing with the help extended by the European trading companies. Now, on account of the growing or the better condition of these people, they now started the construction of temples. Now, the construction of temples was an expression on their part to display their improved socio-economic conditions. Earlier on, most of the lower caste families were downtrodden. They were forced to live at the bottom of the society. 
but now with the advent of the european trading companies many of the low caste families and most obviously not all the low caste families were able to improve their conditions and now they started the construction of temples so this explains how the low caste social groups amassed the wealth and resources which were required for the construction of new temples now religion in the subcontinent has always been dominated by the upper caste members now this is for the first time the lower caste members were able to make their own temples earlier on they were not even allowed to enter the temples let alone constructing a temple but now they were able to make their own temples now most of these low caste families had their own local deities whom they worshipped now earlier on when these local deities did not find any space in the temple premises which were dominated by the upper caste members these local deities were housed in small thatched houses but now these local deities found space and they found the place of worship in well constructed temples in different parts of bengal now around this time the temples that were being constructed by the lower caste members in different parts of bengal were modeled on the thatched village huts just a while ago we talked about how the local deities were initially kept in these thatched village huts now when these lower caste members were able to gain the resources they required for the construction of temples they made sure to not let go of their uniqueness of their identity which is why the temples they made were also modeled on the former thatched village huts now these temples that were made during this time could be classified into two categories in terms of the appearance or the layout of the construction so let us now find out what these temples were categorized or classified into firstly some temples were do chala the do chala temples had two roofs here you can see how there are two roofs on a particular temple and these two roofs were placed adjacent to each other to construct these do chala temples along with the do chala temples another kind of temples were made which were known as the chau chala now as the name suggests chau means four so this shaochala temples were made of four walls here is one here is one wall here is another and at the back of this wall would be the fourth wall so there were four walls on these temples which is why these came to be known as the shaochala temples now in this shaochala temples there is a distinctive stylistic feature that all these walls all these four walls converged into a single point now both these do chala and chau chala temples were constructed on square platforms now these temples were made of brick and terracotta now earlier on most temples that were built throughout the indian subcontinent were mostly made of stone but in order to preserve their cultural heritage and tradition these low caste members constructed these temples with brick and terracotta now on the walls of these temples terracotta sculptures or terracotta engravings were also made now these testify to the mastery or artistry of the crafts persons who constructed these temples now the question that arises is that where do we find these temples in great number in bengal but before finding out answers to that question let me ask you another question the temples constructed in bengal by lower caste families were modeled on thatched village huts do you think this statement is true or false well the correct answer is 
true. The statement is true because the lower caste family members wanted to preserve their heritage and tradition which is why they modeled these new temples on the ancient and the former thatched village huts. Now to answer the question that we raised a while ago, most of these terracotta temples could be found in Bishnupur which is located in Bakura district in the present day Indian state of West Bengal. Now this map shows you an outline of West Bengal where you could find Bishnupur. And it is in Bishnupur that we could find these terracotta temples in large numbers. Now Bishnupur stands witness as well as testimony to the distinctive cultural heritage of Bengal in terms of the temples that were constructed in this region. This now brings us to an end of our discussion on the making of regional cultures. In this series of lessons we focused on several non-material aspects of culture like language, religion, kingship, dance forms, paintings. But we did not keep ourselves restricted to understanding different aspects of culture only. We focused on one region very minutely where we understood the different cross currents that together contributed to the cultural heritage of that region and that region we focused on is Bengal. We learned about how Bengali as a regional language came into being. We also learned about the geographical location of Bengal and how it gained prosperity over time. We also took into account the classical style of architecture that is terracotta and brick temples that could also be found in Bengal. Now over these lessons what we have been trying to do is understand how various aspects or currents of culture together contribute to a regional culture. Cultures are regional in nature and this is a point that we have been harping upon all along. The culture of a region is always distinct and exclusive and it will be invariably different from that of another region. Now when we focused on Bengal to be specific, we could understand how the language or the architecture that developed in Bengal are very very different from what developed in some other region. So we have successfully understood how different factors together make up regional cultures. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it's rewarding too. So register for free now.